Strategies aren't working. He will pull out the wildest builds. He will do whatever it takes. He has more range than any other Protoss player. Yeah, that superstar X Factor, the instinct to survive, as we've seen out of Classic so far. We get a look at the maps. We'll be starting this one off on Acropolis. And we have a ban for Winter's Gate on Dark Side and a ban for World of Sleepers. I don't think that's super surprising from yeah. Classic. World of Sleepers, of a very big map. Winter's Gate, you know, it's just one of those funny maps. I feel like we're seeing these super confident macro zergs uh, just veto that, just take the odd map out of the pool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to kick off our second semifinal here at BlizzCon. In the bottom right position, the red zerg player, he is Dark. And up here in the top left hand side of the map, the blue Protoss player, give it up for Classic. It's the best thing about tournaments like this, Pig. You get down and dirty, you get to the final stages, you have to pull everything out. There's a big patch happening before we get into any more tournaments after BlizzCon, and that means a lot of strategies. If you were hiding anything, this is the place to bring it out. Of course, we saw Classic grasping for breath in that last match, and he did pull out every single possible stop to take that win already with that forge. Uh, Pig, it looks like we're going to be seeing that aggression kick up again. You know, going down 1-2 in a series, that's not something Classic's looking forward to again. He's going to pull out those strategies that worked so well for him before from the get-go. Immediate pylon in the mineral line almost looks a little bit like a fake. That's a real funky, cool position there. And as the drone comes down, is he going to commit more to it? Of course, this is gateway into Forge. And just this one probe bouncing around here. No second probe to give away the fact that he's committing. Now, he does let the pylon finish, so he's going to pull a few more drones down. As you were saying, the pylon's a little bit out there. And strangely enough, he's going to go for the cyber core back home first. Yep. And it's like a weird, I'm faking, but not really faking type build since at Forge, of course, we had our eyes on it. It did complete. He had the option to build the cannons, but he's not willing to commit too hard just yet. And perhaps that's still a part of his mind game. Oh, it's going down, it's going down. Are going down. There we go, three cannons go down just as that's about to finish. Needs to get another pylon down. These cannons mightily exposed. Every single drone pulls down immediately there. Dark with a sick reaction so far. Classic's gonna have to try and wall them off in the bottom right. Doesn't get it, he does. Only one drone there on the bottom side. Those pylons blocking it in. It does look like he's going to be able to finish at least those two cannons in the mineral line. Oh my goodness. And you talk about the impact this has. Of course, he is trying to get a block up here to knock down this base. But on the other hand, pick, he's also denying a tremendous amount of income with all of these drones that are here. Of course, it's a significant investment for Classic to try and pull this off. But a couple of cannons oh. are going to finish up. Now he's going to focus down the drones or the Zerglings. It looks like he is indeed focusing on the drones. He realizes this will eventually get help. Just trying to take as many as he can. Does only get three workers. That is not enough damage there for Classic. His Nexus has been massively delayed. He's committed a ton to this. You can see there in the resources lost, about double the resources lost for Classic. Dark starting off with a nice hold, not underestimating this. A lot of players would have sent the workers back. He kept the workers down there. He had a jump on top of this. Classic's rush not working out at all. Yeah, I think watching the last series that Classic played is like, oh, this guy will not stop building cannons if I allow him to set up in the first place. So wanted to make sure that he did not risk it in any way. We have the Stargate on route back home. Of course, the nice thing for this during that entire mess, Dark was able to get up that third hatchery so he can get his production going at a pretty decent pace despite missing a lot of mining time, which is something that we, we have a bit of struggle sometimes quantifying in StarCraft in terms of how badly does it affect the income to pull those drones that early. But the Protoss player, on the other hand, well, their second Nexus is only just now finishing, so the worker income for Classic, well, he hasn't been able to build as many as he would have otherwise wanted to. Absolutely. Opportunity cost lost in a big way on both sides. But of course, stopping that economy down uh, there. And when it when it settles, I mean, you've got Dark who put down a third hatch before he'd even cleaned up the cannons. As the cannons were going down, his third hatchery was on the way. He's now got three bases, and we're going to see his worker count explode. Not necessarily immediately when he held the rush, but now at this point, we see an eight worker advantage. Often, it's not until about 40 workers apiece where the Zerg actually overtakes the Protoss. So already a fantastic head start. And Dark going into map one strong. Is he even going to see that forge start spinning there? 
Yeah, that's interesting, Pig, because, I mean, to me, that says, well, possibly wants to attack. And look at that. He actually takes both assimilators after the Overlord dies and cancels that plus one attack. So he wants him to be thinking about a possible push. Instead, he's doubling down with a double Stargate. Oh, and I'd love to see lots of Phoenix. Yeah, it swaps into Phoenix after just a Phoenix and an Oracle. Normally, you'd be going Phoenix, Oracle, and then either a few more Oracles or into your ground play. Two Stargate, a very rare air superiority play. Something our resident Proton Whoa! expert Rotterdam has been oh, calling well, for. Oh, well, you know what? If Rod Roddy backstage, he must be losing it now. If that plus one starts up for the air, which means we are going to be seeing a substantial commitment to that Stargate tech from Classic. And I love to see it, Pig, because we're in this situation where I think doing the standard schmandard, we've clearly seen it to fail and to crumble yeah. against these top Zergs. If you play ball, those Zergs are going to get up to that lair, and they're either going to obliterate you with Nidus Swarmhost, or they're going to tech up to that super strong Broodlord Infester. Protoss players are trying to be a little bit more creative, and that's what I'm seeing out of Classic so far here. These Depths just shading on through. Not going to get too much good defense for the slow Zergs, but spots a lot of things out on the map. That's going to tell Classic you've got to be very careful with securing a third base. You're going to need to make a good number of Adepts, wedge them either in the mineral lines or in between a few pylons and Classic has to keep that Oracle back when he wants to secure that third. It's going to be key for securing the expansion. So, in a scenario where he were to have finished that plus one attack upgrade with his Ling not seeing a third base pick, as a Zerg player, he's going to poke the front of this wall, but is, were you expecting him to have already hit with something? Is, is the bailing this reactionary? Did he think it was going to be like a Zealot attack, maybe? Yeah, right now he's scratching his head, his dark. He's saying, what are you up to? There's still no third. I haven't seen a War Prism come out across this map. I'm actually surprised Dark doesn't have Zergling scouring the corners. You're playing against Classic, the guy who loves to proxy gateways out there. Um, it's almost undoubtedly going to happen at one point in this series. So Dark here does now see that delayed third base. He's going Bane Nest, Roach Warren, melee upgrades. He is building more Queens, so maybe he has an inkling that this is indeed two Stargate Phoenix. Yeah. I, I feel like if, if he's paying attention, right, he can see the Cyber Core is moving a little bit, right? Because yeah. he's getting that plus one air. So, well, you've already got Warp Gate, so there's only one thing it could be. And I, I guess the situational awareness is something you have to be on top of. The extra queens can help. Oh, six, seven spore crawlers are being added now as the Phoenix <laughs> cross the map. Pig, he's trying not to lose too much to this, but with plus one attack, these Phoenix are going to rip and tear if they can siphon off any of these queens on the edge. Yeah, that is a lot of Phoenix, and he's not stopping production just yet. He has backed up so many. And I think with it non-stop Phoenix production, there we go, actually no more Phoenixes. So he's swapping out of it, I believe, at this point. Oh Three shield batteries on the way. He's worried about that Nidus Worm attack that could come across the map. He's starting more Phoenix now. So he Third thinking, target! Yeah, he was thinking about going into Robo and, and, and whatnot. Uh, stop two Phoenixes, but now he's realizing, wait, you've got so many Queens, there's no time for a transition. I have to swap into that. Well, he breaks up in that front line a little bit with the Banelings. There are still two batteries, but trying to soften this up as that Nidus network completes and he begins the Roach production. Now, Roach speed is on the way, and as good as these Phoenix might be, even if he could lift up the Queens, there's not really a whole lot on the ground to actually deal with this or any of the Roaches, Pig. Yeah, those Roaches are going to be a big problem. Phoenixes can deal with them but he's got to get enough to overwhelm the Queen. That is the race right now. The arms race between these players. Dark has spent all game building up that oh, gigantic God. pack of Queens. Those Phoenix need to get back here and they need to overwhelm it so they can start picking up these Roaches and dealing with this push. He's going to try and go into Void Rays to stop this big Zerg attack. A sentence that I cannot say has half been followed with a Protoss victory in a very long time. It is going to be a bit of a last ditch effort. I don't think he can hold on to this third. The Phoenix are just oh. going to come up, grab the first queen, and they're going to get to work on this defense. And of course, if he can get rid of the queens, the Void Rays will have a ton of firepower to use against the Roaches. Perhaps uh, this is this was his planned counter if this was a response from the Zerg in the first place. You know what? These Phoenix are actually doing really good. That Nexus has not gone down just yet. Uh, he's going to have to make sure he takes that out. Is Dark. He's trying to build Spore Crawlers right Ooh, now. Yeah. The Phoenix, though, taking out the last Queen, those Void Rays. I think he's got to just focus down these fours and gain control of this position. Wow. Tries to focus down the Nexus, but so far it is still standing strong. The Spore oh, Crawlers wow. are going to be annoying, but there are some stars because he's going to unload from you. Are the night? The Zerglings are stuck against that Zella trying to get to the Nexus. Saving this would be absolutely massive. Yeah, and the Zergling's going to come in. Dark will secure the snipe. But you know what? He's kept a good amount of Phoenix alive. There's three Void Rays out, two more on the way. Classic here. He's got an amazing harassment force. That number of Phoenix is going to be able to wreak havoc on his mineral lines on the counter offensive. Zergling's going to come for a little surround of these Stalkers. The Void Rays, though, of course, offering fantastic fire support from above.
and not really a core anti-air unit available. That's when we're going to see the passive lane start up for the Fester energy. But the Phoenix, on the other hand, I mean, I think the favorite strategy when people first learn about StarCraft 2, why don't I just kill all the overlords with my mass air units? And he's going to be able to put a bit of a dent in that, almost getting him to a supply block, but maybe more importantly, seeing the infestation pin. Indeed, those uh, Infested Queen, of course, very good against Phoenix. I actually wouldn't mind Classic swapping into ground play here. Uh, he's got to get a third base, though, and that's his real immediate problem. His main base is finding out. His natural's getting low on minerals. He's going to go and take the third on the right-hand side away from this creep spread and just using lots of stalkers on the ground to support this army. Quite awkward, isn't it, too, because he didn't go for that robotics facility tech. He's still actually adding three Void Rays at a time. I'm almost expecting a Fleet Bacon at some point here, but without the sustained detection, it's also a bit annoying to deal with these creep tumors because your only other way of dealing with it is to crank out an, uh, an Oracle, which is maybe not what he wants in this composition. Indeed. I mean, you're up against Queen Infester. You know this. How do you deal with it as classic is the question? Taking two gases on the third base. I think his goal here is to just get so many air units spread them all out in a big arc and then overwhelm as long as you're spread out fungal growth is not going to be that powerful you can hit a big attack overwhelm these queens while they're still in not too huge numbers the problem of course is the spork roll is backing that up and so yeah. much transfuse energy i don't know how you can crack through this as classic but i mean with no pro production on the way, he's just starting it up now. I feel like he's a little bit too far behind. He's got to do something with this army. Yep, and we we're talking about the vision that that creep affords you as well. While he does want to make an attack happen, and Nidus is about to finish outside of where that third used to be once again. So possibly funneling some units in that direction. And trying to engage into Queen Infestor is going to be very hard, but here he goes. Big jumping in. Some Infestor Terrors going to get thrown out. Trying to lift up the Infestor while the Void Rays fire at the front. However, those Marines... Well, regular Marines are going to get Void Rays, and so are these ones too. <laughs> Classic will be routed off of the fourth base of Dark. Uh, those infested Terrans doing the work there. The Spores anchoring that, and we see that Queens, they might not be that good at pushing across the map, but you give them some Spore Crawlers, you give them some Infestors for support, and that is the ultimate anti-air force. Uh, Classic right now, he's stuck on redundant tech. He's going back into mass Phoenix. He's, he's still building three Phoenix at a time. He's desperate right now. He's looking for a way to make this work. He's got to crack through. He's too far behind economically, but he just can't do it. Roach is going to backstab into his third base at the same time. And these Void Rays, they're trying to crack through. But I mean, look at that. There's they can actually take out the Queens at the front. Hydras are starting to rally out. They don't have a lot of upgrades. There's a good Phoenix down here. Classic trying to just push his opponent over. He's getting a bit of momentum here. Of course, Void Rays are not going to be great at disengaging, and they're quite flimsy against these fast shooting units. Ooh. First one is going to fall. Of course, the Phoenix energy is going to be the timer for dealing with those Hydralisks as the Voids move on to the Spores. They at least do their bonus damage to those. And we actually have Classic continuing to pick off some of the reinforcements. But once again, that third base looks like Dark should be able to take it down. I think he's got to bring all the Phoenixes to the front of Classic. He's got to pick up these Hydras as they pop out before they get into greater numbers. The Void Rays will be able to cover that third base is forfeit, but right now Classic needs to focus on his push on the other side of the map. He needs to get in there and do more damage. Right now a third Void Ray goes down. There's only two left. Only oh. one left. The Void Rays are gone. Uh, Void Rays are one of those units that do not have any armor by default, so those plus one Hydras obliterate them in a head-to-head -head engagement. And look at that. Vipers are going to be added to this two pigs. I mean, you start abducting these units, throw a parasitic bomb on those Phoenix. This army was a clever idea for the defense out of the double Stargate opening versus the Nidus. But uh, I'm not sure that the longevity is really there versus a late game Zerg composition. No, just some fantastic play here from Dark to take advantage of this. And I love the fact that he just went into the Queens and the Infestors, didn't rush up, but now He's out of the hive, the vipers, the parasitic bomb. And we saw how good it is against Mutalus. Similarly effective against Phoenix. These Phoenix are going to come in and dive on top of this. The Hydras quickly turn and focus by the lots of the Phoenix falling. I mean, he's gotten the Hydralis backline taken out, but with just a few unupgraded Stalkers and a handful of Void Rays, the Phoenix run out of energy. And at that point, they can no longer contribute to the fight. So yeah, okay, grab a few Overlords, sure thing, bud. But that is not going to be the play that he needs to make to win this game. It's 16 Phoenix and three Stalkers versus what's basically going to be Hydralisk with Vipers. Did eliminate all of the investors from the map, which is nice, but other sad thing is Phoenix cannot kill Nidus Worms, Pig. Absolutely not. You know, I admire the way he's playing this series classic, opening up with this sort of cannon rush that was pretending to be a fake cannon rush, trying to play to his image and then shift back. When that didn't work out, he went into the two Stargate Phoenix here. 
These are all these very out of the meta plays, which Zerg players aren't as practiced against. Much more room to catch your opponent off guard. And I think going through this series, Classic recognizes that he is probably uh -oh. the underdog here against Dark. He's desperately trying to make it work with whatever he can. I was gonna say, uh, dangerous to be that close. We saw the four Vipers making their way. They all have enough energy for a Parasitic Bomb. Splitting against that, quite difficult, as that could be catastrophic damage to the Phoenix Count. Glory and we have Dark getting ready to try and put a nail in this one. Yeah, even making Banelings in case there's charge zealots here. It's like, no, yeah. no, no, there's like four adepts. You don't, sure. you don't <laughs> need anything anti-ground, I'm sorry. I, here's good news, I guess good news in a way. Oh, the parasitic bombs, Nate, they're gonna go down. The Phoenix diving forwards, but four parasitic bombs. Nope. And goodbye, <laughs> Phoenix. The air army gets toasted. And yes, he did get rid of a good number of the Hydras, but it's not enough, Dark takes game number one. Beautiful play there from Dark. Respecting the cannon rush right from the start and not letting any damage get down. A lesser Zerg would have let that get out of control, but just decisive right through to the finish. And that's the Dark we know and love. Trying to force a scrappy game, it felt like. Classic yeah. was like, okay, I'm gonna do the, as you mentioned, I'm gonna put this pylon in a spot that makes it look like I want you to think I'm cannon rushing, but I'm really not. But then I am cannon rushing. And <laughs> Dark doesn't undercommit, he doesn't underestimate his opponent. Yeah. And going out of that stage, as you said, he's in a great spot. His third hatchery went down while the cannons were being built. And I, I don't mind the cheekiness, like double Stargate with the plus one, that's some fun. Yeah. But then he's like, well, no, I'm gonna triple down. I'm gonna get the third Stargate and start building Void Rays. And, I can't really remember the last time I saw more than one Void Ray built in a professional PVZ in the Protoss win. Yeah, that's been uh, a long time. I mean, if you're not on the 4v4 casual ladder, uh, <laughs> Void Ray is not as powerful a unit usually, especially in this matchup. Usually a niche unit for late game for counter. Yeah. Corruptors, not so useful in the early stages. But we saw there, it was kind of the seesaw, right? Where if he kept that third Nexus alive, and that was very close. And yes. just shut that down before those Spore Crawlers got up may have been able to establish control. And you know, I can't help but cast my mind back, I'm sure Classic is as well, looking at that cannon rush and saying, you know what, this was actually a pretty close game at that stage. Uh, the cannon rush though, a massive overcommit. He saw there were drones down there. He threw cannons down in a very unprotected position, lots of surface area, and it really was not worth the investment in the end. So Classic fell behind from that stage. It was an uphill battle. I love the fact that he went for one of the crazier responses as a follow-up. When you're down, you can't just play stock safe and standard. You've got to no. gamble. You've got to cut a corner here and there. And I, I think it goes without saying that we still expect some degree of those difficult to deal with builds to come out of dark. If if Classic says, oh, I'm going to play straight up. Yeah, you know, I'll go Phoenix into three Oracle. No big deal. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're, you're drowning in the blood of Locust, landing on your Nexus and one-shotting them. You're like, okay, well, back to Cannon Rush as we go. So I don't, uh, I don't mind seeing this type of play out of Classic, but uh, just maybe a few things really... Even with the setup he had, as you said, if he's able to save the third Nexus the first time, just because of the creep, too, like he was forced to take the other base. Yeah, I mean, that's such an annoying position with the Spore Crawlers there and just being a little bit short of being able to deal with it. I, uh, I actually love the two Stargate, though. You know, yeah. Rotterdam's been going on and on about it. I wouldn't mind two Stargate Oracle, even actually, Ooh. in one of these follow up games. That can work out as well. But obviously, there's lots of wild build orders out there. We are seeing Dark win that first map on Acropolis. Next up is Thunderbird following that Disco Bloodbath, Ephemeron, and then Triton. Uh, of course, a big map up next, and one which arguably uh, is the Protoss favored map out of this pool. Thunderbird, one of the best for Protoss despite the strength of the Swarm Host Nidus on this map. Well, let's see if this man can make it work, or if we'll see something a little bit different as we are loaded in to game number two. In the bottom right, as the red Zerg player, he is Dark! And his opponent up here in the top left-hand side, showing some creative styles out there, trying with all of his Protoss heart to win this series and make it to the Grand Finals. Put your hands together! for Classic. Starting this series off in such a scrappy manner, I think we look for silver linings and everything. And for, uh, for our round of eight, when we first went into it, I think one of my favorites, uh, one of the fans was going into this about how in StarCraft lore, there's there's supposed to be more Zergs and like one or two <laughs> Protoss. Like, you know, Terrans never really play against Protoss in lore. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. And, People are like, this is it. Classic is supposed to be the purifier to show up, eradicate <laughs> the Zerg infestation. And that's that's his whole run will have been if he is able to make it happen. 
And going back to the last game, there you go, pylon right in your face. He says, what are you going to do about it? You know, it's such a funny positioning, this pylon, uh, because there are some really cool wall offs you can do with a gateway, where you get a, way, uh, a gateway, two cannons in between, and then another pylon. But it is just straight into Nexus. Forge was never even down this game. I mean, Dark here, yeah, he pulls all four drones. Same response as the previous game. Does respect the push. I was worried for Classic that Dark here would just be like, nah, I'll just pull one drone. I'm, I'm going to, you know, basically call your bluff and not, re not respond to it, not react to it. As it is, Dark here, I like the way he's balancing it out. He even checks over there in case there's like a proxy gate or something, takes the third base. So whilst he's losing mining time on the drones, says, I'm going to make up for it by still getting a quick third base. We're going to respect the threat of the cannon rush. But I think it's like the perfect balance between respecting it and not overreacting. Yeah, I mean, that's classic taking advantage of what is, for, for many people, the most difficult aspect of StarCraft is not necessarily what is good or bad, but how easily you can be aware of what is happening to, to recognize whether my opponent is doing something because he thinks I'm going to respond in a certain way or because he's actually doing it and he's hoping that I underestimate that initial move, but it is going to be a Stargate inside of the main base as an Adept is chronoed out for Classic. And, well, I mean, honestly, at this point, I'm just like, is he going to get another Stargate at some point? <laughs> is he worried about Knight of Stormhost? Does he, does he have... I, I feel like if, you're, if you can be confident against that, you should be able to be confident against everything. Yep, you know, we've seen some interesting openings uh, earlier today in this matchup, both from Classic and, of course, from Trap. We've seen people uh, shy away from three oracles a little bit more. A little bit yeah. more one oracle, two oracles. Ooh. So basically just investing less in those air units so that you can tech up a little bit faster and hit the ground follow-up attack uh, much earlier. I like the usage of the map a little bit, recognizing the creep in the main. It doesn't cover everything for the Zerg on Thunderbird, so he's able to kind of tuck the adept but goes with the natural and yeah, creeps into the adept for a drone. That's really sloppy. I mean, you can go right between the minerals, wedge yourself there, have less surface area at least forced a bit more uh, out of your opponent. So Classic there, dropping in Adept quite early, does get the scout, realizes Dark, of course, is droning very hard. We are gonna see an Oracle coming in and a quick Twilight Council behind it. Uh, only one gas on the natural. This does not look like an Archon drop. This looks a lot like a Glaive Adept follow-up. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised for there to still be a Robo with this to kind of bring a Prism in, but I think it's mostly just gonna be uh, get out six Adept, shade him across the map, walk in another, you know, three or six Adept and really just pile on a bit of that uh, Adept aggression that has served Classic so, so well. I was going to say, yeah, we've seen a good bit of that today now, especially out of Classic. The the resonating glaives, morals with that as well. The opportunity, trying to play something that's not necessarily stronger, but a little bit less easy to predict or see coming, and kind of opening up that opportunity for yourself to make that micro play happen with those ranged units would be pretty nice. Oracle's going to check towards that third. But the Queen, very well placed by Dark to keep it out of his mineral lines. You know, these two players have a big history with Adepts. Dark, the last time they played in a very important uh, a GSL match uh, where I think it sticks in both of the players' minds. Uh, it was, I think, season one of GSL this year. Classic was down 0-2 and then basically killed Dark with just mass Adept attacks three games in a row. Each time off Proxy Gateway is a little bit different to this one, but nonetheless, a unit which has found a weakness in Dark's armor before, something that Classic's at least going to go for a heavy pressure. I'm sure he'll be dropping a third Nexus behind it, but this at least opens up with some tempo. I'm not sure if he mined through, I think only one of the mineral walls in the middle of the map was mined down. I believe one of those is still standing. So not going to be the fastest route across this map, but pretty quick. All right, Robo is completing, and we should be expecting that Prism, presumably, to reinforce oh, this. But, okay, he's going to go for the Observer first, so not necessarily going for a massive reinforcement to all in here. But this the Adepts have arrived. Resonating Glaives is completing. There's only six Zerglings out, man. There's a lot of Queens. Five Roaches have just popped, but that is 13 Adepts with that Glaives upgrade. And they have already taken out one Queen. Going for a second one, going to shade right on in, not wasting any time at all. He's going to go for the Stasis Trap on top of the ramp. I absolutely love this move. Goes to move into the main, the Stasis Trap. Will it block him Ooh. off? Focus down. Now those Queens using that range to good effect, knocking the Oracle out of play as that shade finishes towards the third. And we go up to the nine plus.
Prone count eliminated in this map. That's going to set them a little bit even while that third goes up in an immortal in production with charge. But the attacks are still in play, ripping and tearing through the Zerg economy, bouncing back and forth, turning this. I mean, you think playing against the Nidus is like whack a mole. This, uh, this is a little bit of the Protoss version as he gives them the shape back towards the main again. And drones continue to get carved to pieces by those glaives. Such good focus fire there. That drone count stacking up, of course, on the left-hand side of our screen. The Adepts here are shading between these bases, focusing down as many workers as they can. 25 and so much mining time to boot. Dark down on 35 workers against the 50 of Classic. Classic's got a second robo. He's got charge on the way. This is a big swing back in the momentum of the Protoss player. Yeah, and we think we talk about what makes this map good for Protoss versus Zerg, as you were mentioning earlier, Thunderbird. There's really only one way to get into the Protoss base here. And with the way that this game started, with the economic damage that he was just able to do, with how much he distracted him, there's no Nidus in play. There are no swarm hosts to pop out of those hypothetical Nidus. And for that reason, this looks pretty damn nice for Classic. You are not running Immortals. Or excuse me, you're not running Roaches into a choke point versus Immortals, Pig. It's about the worst thing you could do. Yeah, I love the way Classic doesn't even sit back, runs down, force fields two of the roaches, is like, get out. Nope. Just leave my base alone, mate. I mean, that already makes Dark worried. He's going to start the infestation pit. I think Dark is actually forced into a position where he kind of has to play some sort of comeback game. I think it's going to be Swarm Hosts, obviously a very powerful unit, but I don't even know if he can afford the Nidus Worm. Right now, we're seeing Classic pressure across the map with a big Sentry and Mortal Force. I don't think he's even committing just yet, but he's forcing Ravages. He's forcing more Roaches. He's forcing Dark to invest in these early short-term units. So he's just using that strong position he's built for himself to mess up Dark's progression in this game. Yeah, every punch that he can throw at Dark is going to delay the inevitable Nidus Swarm Host shenanigans. And let's be honest, the last thing that you want to be as a Protoss player is on the back foot, on the defensive against that. You want to be able to keep those Swarm Hosts on the Zerg side of the field, force those Locusts to be used defensively so that you can choose where the engagement is going to take place. If the Zerg can force it on you, well, then you're either trading out your army units for those free Locusts or they're picking off your economy and possibly your bases. Immortal's gonna come in, will focus down just one worker. Good focus fire on the queen. He's gonna push those Immortals out with that prism. That prism needs to be at home right now because we got 10 Swarm Hosts popping out. The Nidus Worm is up. And right now, Dark, I mean, he's gonna, he's gonna be launching Locusts out of Nidus Worms very soon. First Nidus Worm going up in the north. And I don't know if Classic is ready. He needs that Immortal drop to be ready. I feel like he just is not expecting this right now. No, he might get blindsided and as we all know, when it comes to Swarm Hosts, the first wave is generally what sets the tempo for the rest of the game. Without anything there to catch it, to prevent it, to stop it, to delay it, he can take those Locusts, right-click on that Nexus, and if the army is not in position, he could pick it off. Instead, he's going to go with some of the more valuable units, forcing out a few of the force fields, grabbing a sentry, and some of the other gateway units of Classic. You know, not as bad as it could have been. At least his entire army was there to intercept some good Warp Prism pickups to save the low hit point units. Another Nidus Worm on the southern side as Classic moves out to establish his fourth base. Blink once again, the style of choice for countering this in Korea. If you can get up enough Blink Stalkers, they're so mobile that you could just evade the Locust Waves. And when they're on cooldown, that is when you jump on top and force the engagements. But right now, Classic is not in that position. It's a mostly immortal army with a bit of side storm. He needs to side storm these locusts down. They represent so much damage to Thanyas. That big locust wave coming out now towards the fourth. Well, he has a Nidus in the natural as well. And the locusts land on top of the immortals, trying oh. to pick him up and move him around. But the Ravagers are also raining fire upon the Protoss army. Classic is able to hold on against this wave. Yeah, there goes all of his energy, though, forced to morph those High Templar into Archons. We've also got that Nidus Worm threatening on the other side, but this is it. Classic says, okay, I've got to push you away. I can't let you launch these Locusts at me for free over and over. I've got to establish control over my side of the map. And as he pushes forward, he is going to threaten Dark. Dark, interestingly enough, he's going to go for the Lurker follow-up. We saw that in the group stage as well. It's going to give him a very strong mid-game army, but uh, it gives up a little bit of momentum, as he's got to put a lot of money towards that. I mean, at this point, forcing anything other than these endless Nidus attacks would be uh, a, a sigh of relief for Classic, but there are still so many Swarmos at play, and some of these Nidus is also red herrings. He's like, okay, bring your army over there while I send my Locust to your fourth. Oh. And these ones maybe pop, pop a little bit far out. He's going to right-click on the Nexus, and he is going for it. The shields are gone. Less than 50%, and it is. 
is knocked down at the final moment. And that, of course, we see that is where you can start to snowball the Swarm Host with those Nidus. He's going to pop it over here. Be careful. Some of those Locusts not on cooldown. Don't want to get trapped outside the worm. Yep. I mean, good play here. Only losing a few low-cost units for Dark. He's got bank building up. He might not have the biggest economy. And uh, his upgrades definitely aren't too high, but Classic is in panic mode right now. Just frantically running around, playing whack-a-mole, trying to snap these Nidus's down before they become too much of a problem. And I gotta tell you, Nathaniel, that is a big swarm who's count. That is not a small number of Locusts. They represent so much damage in this army. And Psy Storms being used against them, while effective, are going to take way longer to regenerate as Biles are even able to hit some of the Archons in the army. I will say, if that Classic is anything going for him compared to other players that we've seen face the Swarm Host Nidus, he got over 120 supply. So at, at the end of the yep. day, your goal is to get a big enough army that you can bulldoze one or two waves of Locust and just kill the Zerg players, since that's really going to take tie up a ton of their supply, doing a little bit of immortal juggling. Got to be careful as they do get low on their shield. But this represents a really big opportunity for Classic to stage a game-setting up fight. Yeah, he's going to force these Locusts on the defense. Uh, I mean, Dark here, you can't unload those Swarmos on the other side of the map. He's only got a few Lurkers, Roaches, and Ravagers. He's going to do it anyway, the absolute madman. He's going to throw the Locusts defensively with a Protoss army knocking on his doorstep. Oh, some of them get painted onto the Archon there, too. And I got to say, yes, he did lose the base on the southeast side, but he was able to pull the Protoss army back. So kind of uh, playing a game of chicken, as it were, in this Protoss versus Zerg says, hey, mate, you want to attack into me? That's fine, but I'm going to kill everything else you've got and keep popping worms all over. So he says, no. I'm not going to let that be what happens here. Losing a whole base of probes would be catastrophic considering how much that fourth base has been delayed in this game. It's a very brave Zerg to do that. The Lurk is now going to come forward and a very awkward engagement here. But the storm on the clumped up Lurkers might just be enough. Oh man, those High Templar get blasted by the Lurkers Flash. But look at the Immortal Shots cleaning out every single Lurker. He is bulldozing his way through this army. The lack of the Observer too, or to me, the Overseer could not kill the Observer and keep those Lurkers alive. 19 Hydralists are on the way, but everything else is gonna be killed in the open field. Let's not forget, we still have 16 Swarmos. If he tries to launch a wave to keep the Protoss at home could be a good play, but I'm not sure he has anything over there to even try. Oh, dude, the upgrades are getting so good right now. It's about to be 2-1 for Classic. He's got shields on the way as well. His upgrade's getting out of control. Dark has to use these Locusts defensively. They are going to be very powerful. Hydra's coming in at the same time. Lurk is not quite ready. They're trying to buy time for them to morph. Dark coming forward, trying to get a defense together. Plus two missile attacks is going to finish for him as well with a decent number of Lurkers. I believe that's seven of them to lock up. That central position, of course, we see the way that things swing with those mineral patches on the sides of the bases. It does kind of cut it off and create those joints that favor the Zerg as you move down the map. But these auxiliary bases picked off no cancel on that hatchery even, Pig. Yeah, that's a big mistake there. And, uh, you know, Classic, though, that last fight was a bit of a bummer. He lost a lot of units there. He hasn't replaced his, uh, his High Templar until just now. And he engaged, and then he didn't have any observers. His observers got sniped in the fight. Now he's got an Oracle and two observers. He's got a lot of detection to deal with these lurkers, but the Nidus Worm, the Swarm Host, still presenting a huge threat on his side of the map. And that is where the Swarm Host thrives. Your army is on my side of the field. Well, you're going to have to take a trip to the Bifrost and go for the defense if you want to keep yourself economically in this game. And so he does. A bunch of Immortals will go home, and that's going to take the pushing power out of that frontal army. He needs to be oh. careful. Oh, but maybe he does it, though. He gets a Storm out of the Lurkers as they burrow right in front of the Immortals. Quite a precarious position to put oneself into. Dark with an uncharacteristic mistake. He thought that Classic had pulled his entire army home to defend that and ends up getting ambushed in the middle of the map. Classic's got to be careful, though. These units are so damaged. These Stalkers and Immortals just running out of their own. Classic pushing forward like an absolute madman. I mean, really, that's two Immortals and a handful of Stalkers. Now he's got an army together, but I feel like Classic has to take a deep breath here. His army is not ready. It is not complete. As much as putting pressure on your opponent is good, you've got to realize at this point, Dark has Lurkers and Hydras, and he is not feeling the need to use the Swarm most defensively. And because of that, another Knight is where it pops oh, up. God. The Locust in the base classic. You've got to go home and defend. Yeah, he gets another wave. That Nexus is gone. Kills the defending Zealots inside of the main two. Could throw down another Worm if he so chooses, but 
like you were saying, Pig, it's so hard for him to attack here. He's got a ton of Immortals. He does have the Storm now. Overseer seized up for that extra vision. And if he can pick up the Observer, that's going to help so much too. This is all in. He's got to do this right now. He just lost his third base. The Storm was big, but he's out of sight Storm at this point. It's just Immortals, Archons, and a few Stalkers. He's starting to crack through the Immortals standing strong. Still six Immortals up for Classic. Big Daddy Immortals shoving back the Lurkers. The Observer is still alive. Gets the Revelation as well. 17 Hydras are in production. He does still have this Hormos. He's going to bring him out defensively. They're getting onto this. Immortals, he needs something. He needs to continue to move away. Of course, you oh have to my. run that risk without the Prism to juggle them. The Immortals are starting to get chipped away. Yeah, the Immortal Barry is all down. The Immortals exposed with no support. It looked like it was paying off there for Classic for a moment. But as I said, it was a desperate attack. He didn't quite have all the pieces together. But Zealots and Immortals coming in from the south side. He knows he's got to make it happen right here, right now. Zealots charging onto the Swarm Host. Hydras are out here without much else to support them, trying to make a few more Lurkers. They are in position, but the Observer has stayed alive throughout all of this. If he can target fire them, one of the Lurkers picked off. He goes for the second, and he does get them. Another Lurker is on the top side of that, but the Swarm Host refreshed that cooldown. He did chip off five of them with just 11 Swarm Hosts left to try and mount that harass. Good hot pick up there by Classic. But having that third base gone behind it was a real bummer. He has taken a fifth to replace it. So still on four bases here. Oh, the Ooh. Immortals getting knocked down. Oh, the Hot Prism gets killed with the Immortals inside of it as well. And suddenly this fourth base is in dire straits, Pig. That was like half of Classic's army inside of that War Prism right now, Nate. He does not have a lot of tools to work with. He's in big trouble right now. Ling's in the mineral line. Sidestorming three Hydralists, a sure sign of desperation. Classic, he's desperately trying to hang on. I thought he got himself into a good position in this game, but Dark is just relentless. Using that terrifying look at that, we've got a change link blocking the ramp. Those two Immortals oh, cannot man. get out. And he has used that Night of Swarm host that we have seen so much to great effect here in this match to keep the Protoss player at home and to deal catastrophic amounts of harass damage. They're gonna swoop down onto this southwest base. The Hydras are here. He's gonna recall towards it with everything that he's got left Sans one oh, of But I do not believe that's gonna be enough. Probe versus Locust. I'm gonna get sick, pig. Oh, that is not how you should treat your workers. GG <laughs> Dark eviscerates, obliterates, and annihilates Classic in game number two. I really thought Classic had got his feet underneath him in that series, but you could see there that Dark is just such a ballsy player. You can't intimidate him. Most sane Zerg players would pull home when there's that big of a Protoss army knocking on their door and defend with everything. Dark said, nah, -uh, I've got faith in my Lurkers and my Hydralis. I'm just gonna keep popping that Nidus Worm up in your base. And the damage just got out of control. I think Classic had a moment where he just couldn't believe that Dark was brave enough to continue to throw the Nidus Worms on his side of the map. Yeah, absolute madman, as you said, Pig. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna go to a quick break. When we return, we will continue on with Dark versus Classic. BlizzCon 2019 is brought to you by T-Mobile. Their newest signal goes farther than ever, and it's built 5G ready. MSI True Gaming. So Josh, you going for our Drive Safe and Safe discount? Yep, using the app, Drive and Safe. You wanna go, bro? Do not mess with my discount. <sighs> Get a discount up to 30% with Drive Safe and Save. Every superhero has an origin story. We all gotta start somewhere.
welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the StarCraft II World Championship Series Global Finals. We are so close to determining our second semifinalist, and we welcome all of you here at BlizzCon. Thank you for hanging out with us and watching some awesome StarCraft. As far as the most history in esports go, it's kind of hard to beat this one, Pig, and boy, oh boy, this tournament is shaping up to be one for the books. I mean, the arena is filling up more and more as we inch closer to the grand finals, and the second semi, I mean, the games have been scrappy, they've been a little bit messy. So far, though, Dark, the player has just looked completely impetuous since the get-go. Looks like nothing can stand in his way so far. He is terrifying. He's been absolute monstrous in this series, and we had what seemed to be some opportunities for Classic on Thunderbird, but unfortunately yeah. was not able to stem the overwhelming tides of Locust washing upon the shores of his <laughs> base, wave upon wave. Maybe yeah. this is where he turns it back, though. It's uh, It wouldn't be the first time something crazy happened, Pig. I actually, I actually, I mean, we've seen him do it before against Dark. Uh, we've seen him do it before against all sorts of players. Classic is one of those players who can make amazing comebacks happen. He's done it in all sorts of matchups. He's got to win Disco Bloodbath, Ephemeron, and then Triton three in a row back to back. And uh, at this point, I mean, is it Blink DT time? I hope so. We're gonna have to wait and see. It's time to throw the kitchen sink, ladies and gentlemen, as we are loaded into map number three in the northwest of Disco Bloodbath. We have the red Zerg player. He is Doc. And his opponent fighting for his life down here in the bottom right hand side of Disco Bloodbath. He needs all of your energy, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for Classic. It's a hard road. <laughs> At this point, you just you gotta, gotta throw caution to the wind. <laughs> you've gotta, you gotta lay it all out there. You can't uh, freeze up at this point. You've gotta say, look, to win from here would be a heroic effort. If I can do it, if I can get that together, it's gonna be something people remember for a long time. Yeah, we think about the way that he has been playing this series so far, and the focus seems to be cause chaos early on and try to stall and delay that mid-game phase where the Zerg player goes into that Night of Swarm host. In game number one, it was off of multiple Stargates, and he put himself in an awkward spot where, well, he had Void Rays versus Zerg, and that's just early game not really going to do a whole lot for you. And then in game number two, the Adept Harass, that huge attack, really did a ton of damage. He was way up on workers, way up on his supply, but by the time that he was trying to get ready to move out with his army, the game of Zerg Whack-A-Mole had already begun, and he was once again stuck inside of his base, unable to really get out on the field with the tech, with the units yeah. that he needed. It did look closer and closer compared to that first map, but he really will need to bust out something truly special here if he wants to not only, of course, win this game, but mount a three-game-in-a-row comeback against, well, the number one ranked player in WCS Korea points this year. Yeah, arguably the best Zerg in the world right now. I'm sure Serral, Raynor, and the others uh, up there, Rogue as well, you know, all have something to say about it. Of course, in this tournament, we know exactly who it is who's going to be fighting against the winner of this match. That is going to be Raynor waiting for the winner of this match. And, you know, I mean, Dark has just looked so strong. And he, he's his own flavor of Zerg. He's a Zerg who's not afraid to cut a corner here, to take a risk there. And that's what makes him so scary. I feel like a lot of these players, when you talk to a Protoss player going up against Dark, they say, look, sometimes he just goes all in with the craziest attack. We saw him in the group stages just building a big pack of Ling Bane at this really odd point where it wasn't meant to be effective, but because it was so surprising, he was catching his opponents off guard with it. Dark is a guy who has a pretty good range of strategies. And so, I mean, we talk here about Classic being the guy who's got to mix things up. It's hard to keep your confidence and to keep kind of double checking and trying to get your reads on Dark while you're pulling these funky strategies out. So scouting is super important for Classic. Yeah, no, I mean, we talk, go back to even just the last series that Dark played against Maru. He dealt with Maru's attacks the first two games, and then once he was up 2-0, he said, oh no, I'm gonna bring the fight to you. And, you know, he, he was able to kill him with that. So a lot of it just comes down to not only are you trying to pick a build that will stop Dark's mid game or prevent it, but you're also trying to be aware of the fact that he may choose to kill you before the mid game. And whatever strategy you're doing may not necessarily be good if he were to ravage or bust you, do some sort of weird cheeky Ling Bane thing early on. You've got to be so careful playing against uh, a true mastermind of the Zerg race. You're going to see that Oracle opening here. 
Gonna come right on across this map. Look at this queen, so well positioned. Gonna go straight to the natural, actually. Sporecrawler is not down there, finds an open mineral line. Classic, finally in this series, gets a little bit of damage done with that first Oracle. Nice start. Yeah, getting the three drones. Flies over towards the third, though. You gotta be careful. Losing the Oracle oh. would be really bad. Oh, that's okay. still nasty. Even losing that many hit points is actually really bad, even though the shields regenerate. Once you're that low, uh, you really can't take a lot of hits. That becomes a stay-at-home Oracle for the rest yeah, of the days. Yeah, that's the revelation or the stasis trap Oracle for sure. I'm just, uh, yeah, I'll take care of stuff at home. I can't really go out too much anymore with this low health, so I love this low chill. I love Vulcan. Resonating Glaives again. I mean, it did do a significant amount of damage in the last game. A lot of it comes down to whether or not Dark gets a read on this. Uh, for uh, Thunderbird, the defense came down to getting the roaches out, had some lings. But he took a lot of damage, right? So no. maybe in this case, if he recognizes that that's what it's going to be, already sees a large number of adepts to start off. Perhaps we get those banelings, and you know, get a couple of those splash on these adepts. That attack gets neutralized real quick. Yeah, a lot of minerals right now for Classic. I think something's going uh -oh. on with his build order. He's fully walled himself in right now, but his gateways are only now coming down. He cannot take another base. Okay, it is going to be a two base wow. adept all in. All right, all right. I'm going just... for the Neve 2017 build. Oh, yeah. This is a, uh, a ton of adepts. And you know what? When your opponent responds with a Baneling Nest, Nate, they do not have a super good answer to it. If you spread those adepts out, the Banelings can't hit too many of them. And adepts trade very well versus Zerglings. Of course, Dark still does not know this is what he's up against. But because he's confused, he says, where's your third base? Where is your tech? What are you doing? He's dropped the Roach Warren. It's only a matter of time till he does have those Roaches out. Now this is going to be where it all starts here. He needs to get a good first engagement, splitting those adepts as you were talking about, Pig. He is going to throw the shades to try and bait the army back to give himself time to make those moves. But also really importantly, you want to get that warp prism over there to help support it. Big Stasis Trap did hit the main mineral line, freezing a lot of those workers in position. Doing another one too. Here. Yep. Just trying to keep Dark busy, hitting in as many places at once. Six more adepts walking on the other side of the map. Dark. He's supply blocked for a little bit there. Is he going to go? Yeah, drones. It's all drones. He doesn't know there's another wave. This is an all-in attack. But Dark a little bit lax on his scouting. He's sending a Zergling across. He's finally going to realize it in the future. I think it's going to be too late. Five roaches start up, but that is a horde of adepts knocking on his door. An extremely well-timed round of drones for Classic. He's going to open the door for an opportunity to get something done here. He does not want to take big Bane hits. That is the one way this gets completely destroyed. Otherwise, there's plenty of micro potential between the sentries as well as the adepts that he has. Now, he's going to throw the shade. He wants to bring the sentries up with the prism to force field the army away, but that opportunity is not going to come just in. He's going to force up an actual rip. Some of the Banes do splash. He does have a sentry still alive. He picks them up in the prism. I'm not sure if there's enough force field to completely block this off. He's going to warp in one more sentry. He could isolate the third base. Of course, the adepts can shade through those force fields, but you want to fight this Zerg army in pieces if you can. Yeah, these adepts doing good work. Those force fields being broken, though. Roaches and Banelings are amazing units against the Depths. He's going to crash on down this ramp. A lot of the Banelings do get focused down. Adepts decide to engage front on. They're going to try and overwhelm the Roaches and Queens. Those transfusers from the Queens are massive. Classic putting everything in on this. 18 Adepts to fight against eight Roaches and a Ravager trying to add just as much as he possibly can. But the drones in the main base are going to get caught trying to make their way down to the natural. He's picking off a good amount of them. Still a little bit of a worker lead. Let's not forget Classic's walled in on two bases. Everything he has here is just that big everything and i do not know if the prism's still alive he's building it's another one but he cannot reinforce the prism going down i mean that's such a hard blow to take dark there he broke down oh, he no. shut down the push 12 worker kills was not enough dark was in the lead over 20 workers this entire duration he is making higher tier units that counter classics units he's got roaches he's got banelings he has stood his ground firmly in this map and I think Classic here, he's going to try to make something happen. He's going to go into the, dis the Disruptor tech. He's going to continue to harass with Adepts from multiple angles. But it needs to be a perfect game from Classic. He's got to dig for some big mistakes. Dark here can taste victory. He knows he's close. Hoping to make it work with the Disruptors. The cry of a bald eagle rings upon M. Canning's ears somewhere in the distance. Hoping to give him that power to land a few magical shots with those Purification Novas to claw this game back. Everything is on the line to try and find some way to get a foothold as he slips down this mountain. He's managed to climb to the top four, but Dark stands here ready to kick him back off into the abyss. 
Well, he has got a long road ahead of him. Nathaniel slipping off the mountain, as you say. I like what he's doing, though. Adept's here, trying to shade across, looking for angles to harass from. Dark's defense, rock solid so far. Not really finding anything. Pokes in, pokes out. Good prison micro. And of course, this Phoenix spotting the Roach only. Ravager Baneling army. Uh, we just, of course, heard the consciousness of the Disruptor is online. We've got a single Disruptor out, a few more on the way. And it's such a cool unit. They're so good versus this composition, Nate. Yeah. But when you're going into them and you've got one and your opponent already has 75 army supply, I mean, as you said, he's going to need the blessings of him canning. He's going to need amazing shots out of these Disruptors. We are going to need to see the juiciest Disruptor shots since people built them in PvP when Legacy of the Void came out. If Classic wants to find a way to win this match, First Disruptor is going to go forward, launches its Purification Nova, gets a Ravager and a Roach. Those Ravagers, very powerful units, good to grab those. The Banelings don't have speed, so off creep. They're going to be, you can still kind of split versus them, but the Deaths don't have Stim either, Pig. And they're just kind of forced to stay on the run. Needs to get another good Disruptor shot, shoots and gets nothing. Yeah, these Disruptor shots when you've only got one or two of them, and you've got no real firepower in this army, no Immortals. You've got next to nothing here, Classics units trapped up against the wall, and it is desperate for the Protoss player. He is trying to bury his units behind his natural. He's up against a four-phase Zerg. The swarm is coming in. It's only a matter of time. Dark has worked with defense so strong. The Banelings being supported by the Roaches, shutting down the Adept push. He has built an insurmountable advantage for himself. And I mean, even a few good disruptor shots at this moment. You need more than that. You need some absolute magic to happen. Dark here, once again, crushing through yet another series. It's been so difficult for Classic to try and hold on. His wall actually doing no favors as the Disruptor's Purification Nova has to path through those buildings on the ground, which means it's just even more awkward to try and get into a good spot. And he does need to have the full duration of that Nova to blow up the Ravagers, so he can't get too close. He's trying to blow up some of the Banelings that are being built in the back line. But as you said, Pig, Dark has looked so unstoppable in this WCS run. He wants to punch it in for the final attack. He wants to make sure that he can move on to the Grand Finals to play against Raynor. He's gonna try and do some more Disruptor magic, but Dark just too on top, too aware of everything that's going on. A couple of the Pure Nation is gonna get one or two of the Ravagers, but there might just still be too oh, much as he starts to engage nice the front shot. line. Nice shot, does get a bunch of the units there, but the Banelings don't even care. They're just gonna stream on into that base. And uh, I mean, it's a heroic defense here. But this is a truly unfair situation at this point. At about half the supply, there is just no way to make this fight work in your advantage. He's going to micro his heart out to the bitter end. Classic here, of course, with an amazing tournament run so far. He is going to continue to micro and fight as hard as he can. I mean, this was such a dream run for Classic so far, but it's not enough. GG Dark takes the series 3-0. Running into the meat grinder of that natural, but when he has that much meat to feed, it will eventually shut down, and he goes on to the grand finals to face off against Radar. Not necessarily the result people expected here, but you know what? Those GSL fans, they were saying this guy is looking unstoppable right now. And we saw it in that series. He gets a read on his opponent, and the moment he knows what you're up to, he immediately just jumps into the counter, shuts it down. Absolutely fantastic.